David. Yes. What are some of the fastest things you can think of? Well, let's see here. Usain Bolt. Uh, a cheetah. The thrust supersonic car. Uh, lightning. Thrust. Nothing else? Mm, I mean, yeah, but not really. <laughs> So how fast I fell in love with you doesn't oh, make the God. list. <laughs> You're listening to Queer Money episode 406. And today we're sharing 10 ways that you can make money fast. So let's get on with the show. Fast. The mission of Queer Money is to financially empower the LGBTQ plus community. Join us in thanking Capital One for supporting that mission. Before we start, we'd like to give a big and warm welcome to those university or college students who are watching or listening to the Queer Money podcast through their university center website. So welcome and warm welcome and happy welcome. Definitely. We're connecting with a lot more uh, university students, which is a great uh, thing because the earlier we get our money shit in order, um, the more likely it is that we're going to have um, opportunities and chances uh, at having a financially stable and prosperous life. Exactly. And that was actually one of the reasons or the impetus behind this particular episode was the data that came out of the Motley Fool Debt Free Guys LGBTQ plus money study. One of the um, one of the questions asked, uh, what was one of your biggest financial concerns and what are you focused on right now when it comes to your finances? And it was interesting that these two answers basically paralleled each other. That was trying to keep up with the cost of living, which that survey was done right around the time period we were starting to experience high inflation. Uh, and the other was making enough money to cover your expenses. So that's what people were focused on and that's what they were worried about. So we wanted to share some more information around this idea of making more money, um, whether it is something that you want to do as a side gig or something permanent. We wanted to share some opportunities or options for those of you who have uh, the need for uh, increasing your income. And we wanted to try to do it in a manner that it's this is accessible to almost anyone. Exactly. Yeah. And with inflation the way it is and stagnant wages, the rocky stock market, there could be numerous reasons why you might need to earn $1,000 uh, pretty quickly. So uh, here are uh, 10 ways. Uh, and hopefully, uh, if none of these work out for you, it'll inspire you to come up with your own ideas. So, David, why don't you kick us off with uh, tip number one? Sure. This is definitely for somebody who either uh, owns a home or is renting uh, a place that has multiple rooms and you're not using them all using all of them. And that really is to make one of the rooms or even the entire place available through sites like Airbnb, Mr. B&B or VRBO. Um, the really kind of the idea here is that this is, especially if you live in a highly desirable place, um, either seasonally because of travel, uh, it's a it's a vacation destination, or maybe something, uh, a, a big event is happening. This is a great way to actually make a considerable amount of money in a relatively short period of time. And that is putting either a room or your entire place uh, up for uh, short-term rental on one of these websites. And it doesn't actually take a whole lot to be able to start doing this. No, it's actually the barrier to entry is pretty easy. Um, you just need to create, a, you know, kind of like creating a social media account. You just go to either Airbnb or Mr. B and B or any uh, comparable site, VRBO, um, and create a profile. Add details about the room or the space that you're offering people. Uh, take for some photos so that people can see what they be uh, stay, what, where where they'll be staying. And then post it online. Um, if you want more details, specific details on how to actually grow this type of a business to become something more prosperous for you, we suggest listening to Queer Money episode number 163. We talk with Ziona McIntyre, who is an expert on short-term rentals. Um, and this is kind of a, we've talked about this before in the past. This is a little bit of a house hacking strategy, right? So if you if you do um, have your own property um, and you want to sort of offset some of your expenses, uh, this could be a, a great ongoing way to make some extra money to help people who are traveling uh, or even uh, if you want to kind of evolve it a little bit beyond that, you can have um, um, short-term renters or even long-term renters if you decide to go down that path. Yeah. And in 2021, the average earnings for someone hosting just a single room was over $5,000. So yeah. this is an easy way for 
uh, uh, someone to get into this and make a significant amount of money. But one of the other things to keep in mind is remember to check the your local city, uh, county rules and regulations around short term rentals because and and maybe your specific property. Some HOAs do not allow that or have limited uh, amount of times that you can do that. So make sure you're doing it properly first. <laughs> exactly. But that's not an insignificant amount of money that you could possibly make. And um, you know, that's just the average. It's you could beat the average. Just tip number two here is to uh, and I didn't know this was a thing, <laughs> but you can actually rent your car. So which is wonderful because right one of the two biggest expenses for most households, one is typically uh their housing costs, whether it's a mortgage or rent. Um the other is oftentimes their car payments. And I didn't know that you could offset your car payments by having by renting at your car. Uh, I just always thought like your only option was to take Lyft or Uber, but if you have a car, you can rent it out and somebody else can borrow that. Um, so sites that make that available are uh, Turo, T-U-R-O. Um, there's also Hire Car, spelled in a funny way, H-Y-R-E, car. Um, and again, as we said with the VRBO, Airbnb, and Mr. BNB, you simply create an account, uh, take photos of your car, uh, provide the details of your car, make, model, uh, and year. Uh, and on the high end, vehicles can make up to five hundred dollars a day. <laughs> if you got a that high is, end car, <laughs> yeah. But most cars earn between thirty five to sixty five dollars a day. But you know, I mean, there are with with people more people working from home and not needing their car as much as they have in the past. That actually might be a decent way for some people to make some money um, rather than just having their car sitting in a garage or a parking lot or a driveway all day. Um, heck. I wish we had something that would make $35 to $65 a day. <laughs> We've got these two dogs who do nothing. <laughs> yeah. I think one of the things about this one is this is probably a great uh, opportunity for someone who maybe lives in a city where there is a lot of really good uh, public transportation, which kind of may sound odd, but the reality is, is that there are a lot of people in those cities that do not have cars. And right. because they don't have a car, there are there are occasions when they may need a car. They may need to go pick something up that's a little bit larger than what they want to put on, strap on their back and ride on their bike or uh, what they are uh, are able to put on the train or uh, light rail. So we, we see, you're looking at me funny because we've seen some of these videos where you see um, this typically for whatever reason, I don't know why this happens, but it happens in a lot of third world countries where you see these videos of someone riding down the street and they have a massive stack of things that is either strapped to the back or to their bike. And it just seems so precarious, but um, we don't want you doing that. So <laughs> yeah, be yeah. a little bit smarter than that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Number three. Um, and this is, uh, this is one probably uh, more appropriate for younger folks or folks who have just gotten out of school uh, or are still in school. And that is to sell those textbooks. I mean, that's kind of basically the way Amazon got started, right? Selling textbooks and reselling textbooks. So there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Um, there, there are websites like Amazon or student to student, things like that. Um, maybe even just checking with your, with your, uh, your peers who are going to school, especially especially if you know somebody who's coming up behind you that has similar classes or is likely to have similar classes. There's lots of different places, eBay, Craigslist, Campus books, lots of different places you can go to sell your books. Yeah, go textbooks, book scooter or scouter. I'm sorry, uh, book finder. Yeah, there are a number of places to do it. When I was in school, you just went back to the the, the school bookstore and they gave you like a penny shit for, yeah, your, for really, your book. Yeah, you buy the book for two hundred and twenty dollars and they give you twelve dollars to get to buy it back. Yeah. So in doing some research for some of these sites, it seems like you can you're not going to become rich off of it, but it's a way to make a couple of extra dollars. And I know that uh, when I graduated college, I just had whole bunch of textbooks that I never got rid of. Um, and they just sat in my mom's attic forever and she never stopped talking about it. I probably could have made a couple bucks and gone out and had a nice bottle of wine had I sold them and not had to hear my mom complain so much. But all the textbooks are in my in, in her attic. Yeah. I will say one of the things to keep in mind is that some of these you may have to get creative and do multiples. It's not that um, you're going to be able to make $1,000 in a weekend on selling textbooks unless you have a ton of textbooks. And we're but, going to talk about yeah. uh, uh, stacking some ideas here later on in the episode. 
Tip number four here is to uh, answer questions on Just Answer. Just Answer lets experts in various fields answer questions and make money online while they're uh, sharing their expertise. So you have to be an expert in a certain field, or maybe you're an expert in a couple of different areas. Um, and you don't have to actually have like a college degree or a certificate necessarily for all of these uh, expertise. Um, but if you have some knowledge around certain things, uh, you can answer some questions on Just Answer. Uh, when you create your profile, uh, one of the things that you'll do in addition to um, your personal information and uh, maybe a picture of yourself is to show show what qualifications that you have and and why you're um, uh, why you uh, have authority on talking about certain topics. They do do a background check, right? Because they want to make sure that they're actually getting decent experts. So they uh, they're not having like ch somebody who has gotten very fancy with Chat GPT being able to answer all these <laughs> questions. They want an actual person who has knowledge of the situation. And some from what we found is that new experts can earn 20% of what users pay uh, with potential of up to 50%, depending on, on your expertise or the niche. Uh, and most questions will pay experts anywhere from $8 to $14. Uh, so there's a potential to earn anywhere uh, from $2,000 to $7,000 a month. So uh, not insignificant. Yeah, definitely. Number four. Five is continuing along this idea of uh, of writing or creating content, and that is to write listicles. Uh, it is interesting how uh, so many of the uh, items that are on the number on the first page of Google end up being listicles. When you mm -hmm. search for something, oftentimes you're finding five tips to or five ways to. And so there's a lot of people out there who are actually creating these this uh, listicle content. And there are sites, websites that pay for that. So for example, Listverse will pay you up to $100 per list that is that they publish. So yeah, it actually has to get published. Yeah, definitely. There are some other websites that actually just pay you for creating the list, right? So Wonderlist and uh, Sportiology, <laughs> those pay you, each pay you based on you creating a list anywhere from about five to ten dollars there exactly um and maybe that's why we titled this episode 10 ways to make a thousand dollars fast <laughs> right. maybe we'll get on the first page of google and beat list verse or buzzfeed <laughs> <laughs> yeah buzzfeed is a big one <laughs> tired of all the credit card offers you get from your current credit scoring app download credit wise by capital one today to avoid them so uh, tip number six here is to test websites. Uh, this is actually a service uh, type of service that we've taken advantage of before, but uh, there are users who survey and, and test websites to make sure that they work smoothly for, especially for new users, um, or also to make sure they work logically. So a couple of uh, resources for you to, to become a tester of websites. One is experience dynamics and the other is user feel. Um, this is great. Like when we when we publish a we our website um, or we make changes to our website, right? We have a, a very myopic perspective of what the user experience is going to be, and we definitely you know have our friends and family kind of check it out. Um, but it's great to get a completely agnostic uh, uh, person, completely disconnected from us, who's a who's comfortable with giving. Um, constructive criticism on how to make your website work better. And a lot of a lot of bloggers use this, but I know a lot of other resources use it as well. So Experience Dynamics um, pays anywhere from $50 to $100 per study uh, that's done. So that could be significant. And uh, User Field provides anywhere from $3 to $30 per test. Yeah, um, And you're looking to invest anywhere from 20 minutes to up to three hours, depending upon the, the, uh, the, um, the type of site uh, or how big the site might be. Yeah, and this is kind of I, you know, is one you may want to think about as an entryway into possibly a new career. Mm -hmm. There in the tech uh, uh, field, there are people who specialize in doing quality analysis of a website or the tools that they, that are being created, whether it's it for, internally for uh, a company. I worked with QA individuals. I did QA work when I was working with developers, when I worked at uh, several financial services companies. Uh, and there are people who contract out to do this. They specialize in doing this. So it is a great way to kind of get your feet wet and to see if it's something you might want to do. Number seven is uh, to become an online English tutor. Uh, we know that this uh, definitely is big for helping individuals in foreign countries learn and uh, learn English. Uh, and there are, well, you know, it was interesting. We just saw a video the other day. What is, English is the largest mm -hmm. spoken language in the world, which is kind of odd to think about when you think about how many people live in China. But the reality is, is that individuals in places like China and India and many of these other really populous countries, they are 
learning English because it's right it right now is is still the language of business. So a lot of people are learning or want to learn English. And so you can make money by using some of the online teaching platforms that will allow you to either teach adults or teach children. More often than not, what you're going to need here is you're, you're going to need a good internet connection. You're going to be need to be available. Um, it, that's one of the things that's uh, that is important to remember about this is you may be teaching somebody who's on the other side of the, of the globe. So, you know, seven o'clock in the morning for you is seven o'clock in the evening for them. That may be the appropriate time to be teaching them. So uh, this is uh, something that you can use to just make some extra money, but you can also potentially turn it into your career. And that's what uh, Justin McCartney did in on episode 138 of the Queer Money podcast. Yeah. So and you don't necessarily need to have like a, an English degree. You just need to be able to speak English because the idea with most of these, uh, especially the online platforms, is uh, they want uh, the user or the the your, your client, your student would be, they just want to be able to uh, learn to have a more natural dialogue with somebody else who also speaks English. So um, they don't necessarily, I mean, they don't want like poor grammar, but they don't necessarily, they want more colloquial grammar. Um, they want you to be able to have a decent conversation so that when they go to another country or that speaks predominantly English, or when they go to uh, do business online or, or through a Zoom call, for example, um, they can actually have a more natural conversation with somebody. And there's not like the oddity of like, oh, you don't understand my dialect or these idiosyncrasies that we have in, in, in our English language. Yeah. Step number eight or tip number eight is to offer proofreading services. This is again, something else that we've taken advantage of. Uh, there are proofreading services that pay anywhere from 20 to $60 an hour. So this does require you to actually understand the English language a little bit better. Maybe you uh, might will have one diagram a sentence or two in your entire <laughs> life because um, they're looking for proper written English <laughs> um, and great, great, great resources for this as we've utilized ourselves is uh, upwork.com, Fiverr, and even task rapid. So if you are, are if you're friends are constantly telling you that you're a, uh, uh, what do you call me? Grammar, Grammar Nazi. Nazi. <laughs> then maybe, uh, and you want to figure out a way to monetize that very excellent skill of yours that nobody should critique <laughs> or criticize. Um, then maybe uh, create an, a profile on Upwork, Fiverr, and TaskRap at all. So you can offer those services anywhere from $20 to $60. And then the more uh, clients that you get, make sure you get testimonials and and take screenshots of those and get per, get permission to be able to share those testimonials. And you can slowly increase your hourly wage as time goes on. So this could be another great side gig that can, can continues beyond just this weekend. Definitely. Number nine is for the pet lovers out there. So if you uh, love animals, and especially for those who maybe don't have animals themselves, um, this is a great way for you to make some money. And that is to be either a house sitter or a uh, a dog or pet uh, care caretaker when the individuals are not at home. We know that during the pandemic, when a lot of people went home to work from home, um, there were a lot of animals, especially dogs and cats, that were acquired during that time period um, as uh, as emotional support. I think a lot of us needed that kind of emotional support. We um, we got our pups during the pandemic as well, uh, and so that now that a lot of individuals either are being asked to, required to, or choosing to go back into the office, they may want somebody to stop in and take care of their little Luca and Loki <laughs> when they are not able to, or Maybe they're traveling. So using uh, sites like House Care uh, Caretakers or House Sitters America, Rover, or the WAG app, all of those allow you to kind of create a profile to look for individuals who are looking for someone to come in and take care of their animal, either on a one-time basis or on a regular basis. Um, we know several individuals who are posting on TikTok and Instagram about how they basically have used the Rover app as their one of their ways of bringing in thousands of dollars a month. Uh, actually, there's one individual who has brought in several thousands of thousands of dollars a month by basically pet sitting and at the same time is able to overlap this with other jobs. That's one of the great things about this is uh, when you're taking care of someone's house or pet, you may not always need to be paying attention to them. So it gives you a little bit of an opportunity. 
Um, it's yes. also, I would say it's a great thing, um, especially if you're being asked to take care of someone's house and their pet. It's a great way if you are living in a dorm or if you're living with uh, roommates and you just need a break, you want some time away from them, you want some time to be on your own, maybe it's a time to study, this is a great way to make some money, get away from those individuals, have some time to yourself. And uh, and. No, I'm not. Looking, but are you saying I'm not David? looking to get some time away from you? But it is a great way for you to just be able to have some time alone and make some money doing yeah, it. Yeah, right. Get paid to do it. Yeah. So you can study for a test. You could also teach somebody how to doing uh, how to speak English <laughs> while you're pet sitting and making uh you know getting an straight A's in school and making a bunch of money while doing it. <laughs> I love it. Uh, tip number 10 here is to offer lawn care or even landscaping services. Um, it's that time of year. People are looking for lawn care. Uh, somebody needs to mow the lawn, trim the bushes. We have somebody who lives not very far from us who needs to do that. Um, so <laughs> maybe you can offer those services and alleviate some neighbors of some anxiety about lawn care. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know about me doing a whole lot of yard work. I, for whatever reason, the, um, this is our first spring in Ohio, and my allergies have never been worse. Um, yeah. That's why my eyes are looking so puffy right now. <laughs> <laughs> so even if you're just comfortable uh, mowing lawns, you can actually make decent money doing that. That's actually the very, very first job that I ever had. Um, and uh, it's it's a great way to get outside get a little bit of exercise and make some money. And there are a lot of people who can't mow their own lawn. Um, and you, so you can offer your services on sites like TaskRabbit or even Neighbor. Um, so check that out if you want to make some uh, money. You've got a lawnmower, more power to you. Yeah. And our tip number 11 is our bonus here. And that's probably one of the keys to being able to make an extra thousand dollars in say, for example, a weekend or uh, uh, in a couple of weekends. And that is to, as John mentioned before, stack these. Look for ways that you can overlap and do these uh, multiples of these at the same time. As John mentioned, tutoring someone while you're also watching someone else's animal or, or house sitting for them. There's a lot of ways to kind of stack these in different uh uh, and uh, different examples. So get creative, right? Uh, find ways that you can uh, can look at picking some of these up to make a little bit of extra money. I know for, for some people, they just need to make an extra $100, $200 a month. And for others, they want to make that full thousand or even more. So get creative and uh, use these examples. There's a, There's plenty more, but here are 10 to recap. Exactly. So one, rent one or more of the rooms in your uh, house or apartment on Airbnb. Two, rent out your car. Three, sell your old textbooks or other books. Four, answer questions on Just Answer. Five, write listicles. Six, test websites. Seven, become an online English tutor. Eight, offer proofreading services. Nine, pet or house sitting for travelers or people who have gone back to work. And number 10, offer yard care or lawn care services. So stay, stay tuned. tuned for your queer money takeaway from this episode. Start your journey to financial independence with a checking and savings account that doesn't nickel and dime you with fees. Get a Capital One 360 checking or a 360 performance savings account at Capital One today. Thank you for listening or watching another episode. Here's your queer money takeaway. With the gig economy, there are an endless number of ways that you can make extra money and make extra money fast. Try one of these 10 ideas or stack a couple of these ideas or go to debtfreeguys.com for more examples of ways to make fast money or choose that popular website you might have heard of called Google. <laughs> right. Then join us Thursday when we pick apart the most friendly, LGBTQ plus friendly, affordable cities in John's home state, and that is Pennsylvania. And then Tuesday, when we talk about how to find remote work with returning guest, Daniela Flores of I Like to Dabble. Have a great week. Thanks again.